Hey, how's it going? It's Thursday, May 2nd. Welcome back to Foxy Games UK. My name is Fox, your reliable source of aggregated video game news, speculation and rampant rumour. So in today's news, race game studio developer of Project Cars 1 and 2 Slightly Mad Studios home console project could be hitting the skids as investors back out in light of Google's new game service slash virtual online console platform Stadia's reveal. And PlayStation 5 dev kits have apparently leaked online hinting PlayStation 5 will be far more powerful than we first thought. The question is, how realistic is this latest rumour and if accurate, how does this translate to a final PlayStation 5 retail unit? We'll definitely get into all that and more, but first... Courtesy of TechRaptor.net, Madbox investors pull out after Google Stadia's announcement. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I did not believe that this thing would take off anyway, but never to really be a Debbie Doubter or Downer, I thought, you know, give it a chance. But you could argue that the Google Stadia announcement last March crushed a lot of dreams and hopes. After staying out of the gaming industry for over two decades, the BMF Corporation finally decided to test the waters with the theoretically groundbreaking technology that is their streaming engine. Some giants of the industry, such as Ubisoft, were at the announcement likely planning to hit the ground running as the technology will definitely disrupt the industry in the 2020 decade. Meanwhile the market of niche game consoles was in the back probably watching nervously as they realized that Google Stadia and what it means really for the industry one of these projects is the Madbox console first announced on Twitter by Slightly Mad Studios CEO Ian Bell. So it was recently reported that Slightly Mad had withdrawn their trademark application and following that report from PC Games Insider it emerges that the mad box investors are indeed pulling out like drunken sailors, instantly regretful. So Slightly Mad Studios online marketing director Nathan Bell told PC Games Insider that following the announcement of Google Stadia, two of their investors backed away from the project, probably scared and running from the hills at the thought and prospect of their money being dwindled down the drain and as such the future of the mad box is indeed questionable at best. So, the name Madbox is also under evaluation as they were met with opposition from a French casual games company called, you guessed it, Madbox. That's why Slightly Mad has withdrawn their application for the trademark in order to avoid confusion between the two brands. So the name is up for debate, the console itself is facing a rather uncertain future if it will have one at all. This could end up being that Phantom console from over a decade ago. Remember that? That's it, right, it's a Phantom console. Didn't materialize. It was ghost. So what do you think of Slightly Mad's circumstances? Should they give it up? Just stick to games? I mean let's try and be rational here. You gotta hand it to Slightly Mad Studios just for proposing and developing a 4K ready console that is intended, yes intended, to go up against the insurmountable odds that is the PlayStation 4 and 5 and indeed Xbox and whatever branch of consoles they'll be dropping to retail in terms of at least established hardware and brand recognition and install base. I mean, as an investor, you really have to ask yourself, where is this thing going to fit in? And what is the target demographic? In truth, the formerly named Madbox would have likely been DOA, dead on arrival. No exclusives to speak of, a shared selection of multi-plat games, likely older multi-plat games at that, and indies. This thing would have gone ouya into the night and never to be seen again. It appears somebody at Slightly Mad has more money than sense if they actually thought they would have stood a wing and a prayer in this home console climate. If you ask me, Madbox is slash maybe was a pointless exercise in failed economics, but what say you? Okay, in our final new segment of the video, I actually did not want to cover this. I feel I've discussed PlayStation 5 to death, and not every rumor requires attention, particularly the more outlandish and ridiculous ones. However, I spent some time looking at this, looking into it, and I think I can add something to it, and I was sent a link by one of my subscribers and followers, and a quite, really quite a few of you have asked me to speak on the latest PS5 spec rumor, so reluctantly, here goes. First, let's cover the source, reported via WCCFTech.com, and then I'll unpack a few things afterwards for you. Deal? Good stuff. So, apparently the PlayStation 5 dev kit is running a nearly 13T flop GPU. File this one under rumor. 
So the PlayStation 5 has finally been revealed, but very little is known about the specs. Outside of a handful of people, the dev kit is also in the hands of select developers, and it seems like the console is going to be extremely powerful if recent leaks are to be believed. Now, Benji Sells, who has proven to be a reliable insider, even though I've never heard of him, recently tweeted that the PlayStation 5 dev kit is running at nearly 13 teflops GPU capacity. He has since deleted the tweet, uh, but uh, a screenshot of it has been captured. You know, you can't hide anything from the internet. It is there for life, deleted or not. So the tweet reads, it's looking like the PS5 dev kit is running a near 13 teflop GPU paired with a Zen to CPU and hopefully a ton of ultra fast RAM and it's a beast next gen games from Naughty Dog Gorilla Santa Monica Insomniac etc etc are going to look absurd look what they accomplished on base PS4 okay just from the tweet alone we already know Zen 2 is going to be in there so let's remove that that is nothing we know it's gonna have ultra fast RAM remove that and we know Naughty Dog Gorilla Games Santa Monica Insomniac their games are going to look good regardless of uh, any leaked specs of course because of the track record track record on ps3 and ps4 so the only thing here really is the 13 teflop gpu and it's a dev kit which leads me to be a little bit skeptical and i'll explain why but certainly let's go back to the article for a little bit more context so Sony made it clear that the PlayStation 5 will not be released within the next 12 months, which hints at a late 2020 release. Now the console will be powered by a CPU based on the third generation of AMD's Ryzen line and by a GPU that will support ray tracing at hardware level. Now the CPU is based on a third generation of AMD's Ryzen line, contains eight cores of the company's new 7 nanometer Zen 2 micro architecture. The GPU is a custom variant of Radio Navi family and has other components and parts uh, from other technologies all melded together in one lovely melting pot such cohesion in a world of Sony now this will also support ray tracing now initially it was believed to be software but now reports are coming out that it is maybe a combination of both software supported along with some rudimentary hardware ray tracing because of course they need to keep the price in check on this thing now this technique of ray tracing it models the travel of light to simulate complex interactions in 3d environments it can also be used for 3d sound and uh, other swanky new things it's supposed to be the latest hot ticket in visuals and audio design now the playstation 5 is obviously currently in the works as indicated by the architect mark cerny so let's unpack this here's the thing just because the dev kit is running around 13 teflops does not mean the retail unit is going to launch as a 13 teflop power house because obviously sony needs a margin of error when developing games for debugging and things like that so they normally double the ram allocated to the retail unit so if ps5 launches with 16 gigabyte of uh, gddr whatever ram then obviously the retail unit is going to be double that so we're looking at 32 for not the retail unit sorry the dev kit yeah, so we're looking at 32 gigabyte of RAM there for debugging purposes and margins of error. You can expect the same thing in terms of raw compute power. As I stated before in videos, 11.6 teflops of power is generally around that ballpark. Give or take on either side, it could be slightly less, it could be slightly more. It could even be 12 teflops, 11.9 teflops, approaching 12. But certainly, this is not going to be a 13 plus teflop console, specifically because the dev kit is 13 teflops and there needs to be a margin of error in developing software for the retail units. Unless this is just one of the phases of dev kits and then it gets higher as we go along who knows but you know think about the price that sony want to launch this thing and then think about what anaconda is rumored to be launching at and with the power 14 t flops do you really think that uh, you know there's gonna be a significant margin in terms of visuals and uh, just quality one t flop 13 for the ps5 14 for the anaconda don't think so not really i'm not really buying this rumor but uh Certainly, if the dev kits are indeed 13 teflops, then you can almost guarantee that the PS5 will not be when it launches. Go ahead, sound off, share your thoughts and opinions on today's news because that 
unfortunately brings us to the end of yet another video but let's continue the discussion in the comments and for all your current and next gen news updates rumor and rampant speculation hit the like button why not spread the word and keep it locked to foxy games uk remember relevant links where applicable can be found in this video's description subscribe to foxy games uk remember to hit the notification bell so you never miss content thumbs up if you like it here and help us reach more like-minded gamers simply by sharing this video consider supporting foxy games uk via patreon and or grab yourself a foxy games uk branded t-shirt or hoodie available now in various colors and designs support the cause you'll find both links in this video's description so there you have it. That concludes our time together today. It was great hanging out until the next video. Remember, play games, not corporations.